welcome back. As we begin the program tonight, let me remind all of you that people are being killed, butchered, slaughtered, massacred right now by the Zionist Israeli army in the Gaza city area and in Gaza in general. People are dying at this moment, and they've been dying for the last almost 10 days now. Actually, they've been dying for many, many years, over 60 if you become realistic about this whole thing. My first guest tonight is, uh, in my opinion, uh, one of the world's pre premier, if not preeminent, revisionist historians. He is an extraordinary journalist and a very brave and courageous man and a great American patriot. His name is Michael Hoffman. He is making a return visit tonight after far too long away from this program. He has a book that many of you may have heard about. If you haven't, let me tell you about it. It is 1,100 pages long. It is hardcover. It is entitled Judaism Discovered. It has been banned by Amazon.com. Amazon pressured by a rabbi to stop all sales of the book. So we would look to you folks to help move sales along and pay close attention this hour. We're going to hear a lot of very interesting and important things from Michael Hoffman. Let me read a little bit from his homepage about the book because it is important. Judaism discovered differs from virtually all the writing on this subject, which has preceded it in the past hundred years. It does this by means of empiric and strictly factual discovery of Judaism's deepest operational and spiritual secrets, and in particular, Judaism's extremely circumspect epistemology of concealment. Let me impart to you a great secret. Whoever hates Judaics perpetuates the role and the rule of the rabbis. This secret is documented and explained in my book. I have sought to break new ground and to anticipate the counter-arguments of rabbinic and Judeo-Christian critics. It has been my objective to craft Judaism discovered so that there is no possibility of a rational refutation of it. While it's true that the book's evidence and arguments can be twisted, misrepresented, and demonized with the usual underhanded ADL-style smears and falsification, the information in Judaism discovered cannot be easily disarmed because much of it pertains to epistemology, viz. Judaism's knowledge of itself and the ways in which it responds to discovery. Welcome back to the program, Michael. Thank you, Jeff. It's good to be here. You're a busy man. Uh, yes, I am. We have up at uh, the guest section at rents.com under Michael's name. His name goes right to his home page. And I've also posted the two-part review done by Brother Nathaniel Kapner. And they're, they're very good reviews. And it, at the bottom of each, we'll tell you how to get this book. Again, it's 1,100 pages. It is, it is a book literally unprecedented in modern history. And I don't think uh, we'll see another like it. Uh, in general... Michael, how has the book been received <laughs> by honest critics? Well, it's really difficult to gauge the response because, in general, it's been blacked out in the uh, sphere of uh, the printed word and uh, publications that are what you would call uh, hard uh -huh. copy. Yeah. Uh, online, the response has been very good, and in general, the sales have been strong in spite of the fact that there's been a blackout in effect, uh, because largely what happens is the sales, I think, are based on word of mouth. A person gets the book, they find that it uh, meets their expectations, and they then uh, notify other people. It's kind of like a good carpenter in a local town who doesn't do any advertising, but he's always busy because the work is considered to be adequate and people uh, regard him as honest. And uh -huh. I think the same right. thing has happened to my book, Judaism Discovered. That's a very, very wisely put way to say it all. Uh, this, in a way, is your book is rather like the, the Mearsheimer and Walt book, except yours has been banned. <laughs> Theirs at least got published. Uh, both raise extremely uh, interesting, fascinating, and relevant, if not, well life-depending information. I mean, we've got to understand this thing, because right now, as we look at the world, we see no longer a stealth or background effort. Uh, it, this is an in-your-face effort now by the New World Order, led by 
world Zionism to literally take control of, of most of the so-called civilized world. Uh, we have to understand what's happening. We must understand the enemy. Uh, anyone who slaughters and massacres people, uh, controls nations, starts world wars, finances both sides, and I could go on for hours, is the enemy, the enemy of peace, the enemy of freedom, of enlightenment. Uh, and this species is going to fail unless we understand what is happening to it and how it has been co-opted and how these United States, oh, excuse me, I always do that, these formerly United States have been taken over literally and are now the cash cow of world Zionism. And I don't mind telling you that. I've been telling you that for many years. And I don't know if you agree with all that or not, Michael, but uh, have at it. Well, my own concern, of course, is, uh, Orthodox Judaism and the role that it's playing both in the Holocaust in Gaza and in many other spheres of its influence. And uh, we could begin with, uh, with I think, what is a hidden component in the uh, war on the Palestinians, because I find that most of the uh, rhetoric that's been generated in favor of the Palestinians is largely futile as an observer of this scene since at least the late 1970s. Um, I, I'm aware of how many massacres and war crimes the Israelis have perpetrated, and I'm also aware of the thin margin of people who protest uh, these massacres. But I think the reason why we don't get anywhere with our protests and with our activism is, is because we're only dealing with symptoms and we're not getting to the root. And the root of the problem is actually Orthodox Judaism. Now, a lot of people believe that uh, Zionism and Orthodox Judaism are inimical to one another, but actually uh, they were synthesized by a remarkable figure in the 19th century who I study in my book, Moses Hess. And Moses Hess was uh, someone that Karl Marx called my communist rabbi. And Hess was both a Zionist and a Talmudist and a communist, all in one. So uh -huh. he took the Hegelian... Uh, process, and he synthesized these two uh, supposedly opposing theses of Zionism and Orthodox Judaism and reconciled them uh, in a model which was actually adopted beginning in the late 19th and early 20th century, and which mm -hmm. we're still seeing today as uh, the aptly named Rabbi Kook developed what's known as religious Zionism in the 20th century in the Israeli state. Mm -hmm. But the roots of the violence that we're seeing, the uh, grotesque contempt for the Palestinian people is in Orthodox Judaism. And Orthodox Judaism has had an enormous influence over the Zionist state because Zionism is something like a shadow or a reverberation of Orthodox Judaism. So that there are certainly plenty of secular Zionists who may say that they don't follow the Talmud and they don't care very much about rabbis, but at the same time as a process of osmosis, of being part of the culture and of the tradition, mm -hmm. they have picked up this Talmudic racism. And until Arabs and Muslims and uh, Christians and everyone who's concerned about justice in the Middle East begins to scrutinize the religion of Orthodox Judaism rather than falling for the line that it's an Old Testament religion of justice, even if it may be somewhat harsh or pharisaical, mm -hmm. until we do that, we're going to continue to have a missing element in this war on the Palestinians who are basically being treated as crap. And uh, well, that's being, what I, I, yeah. when, I, when I look at what's happening in Gaza uh -huh. now, yeah. we can see that their life is extraordinarily devalued. If the shoe was on the other foot right. and hundreds of Israeli civilians were dead and uh, four or five Palestinians were dead as a result of rocket fire, right. uh, the entire West would be up in arms. What, what is the disparity? There's more to this than simply the fact that they control Congress or that they have an inordinate influence over the media. The roots are in the rabbinic texts of Orthodox Judaism for this contempt for people that they see as subhuman. They, are, they do see them as subhuman. Uh, what was the comment by one former... Israeli Prime Minister, I believe that uh, all the Palestinians, maybe he said all the Arabs in the world, aren't worth one Zionist, excuse me, Jewish fingernail. Yes, uh, that was at the funeral of Baruch Goldstein, the man who slaughtered 40 Palestinians right. in 1994 at the Cave of the Patriarchs. And what's interesting in that particular case is how little we have any context for what's going on in Palestine and in the Israeli state right now, because 
the media seldom identifies the players in this action. They don't provide context. They don't provide background. So, for example, right now, one of the main players is Ehud Barak as the uh, defense chief, right. who, uh, along with the uh, current rulers of the Israeli regime, is initiating this. 